and here we are outside London's premier rock gig, London's Hammersmith Odeon, to see none other than Iron May. Well, behind me, the atmosphere is electric, and the crowd is... Not there. Well, here at the Odeon, the tension is really mounted. Throughout the evening, we'll be talking to some of the people here to see Iron Maiden. I have Stephen here, who's uh, obviously one of the fans. Stephen, do you like Iron Maiden? Yeah. What do you like about them? They're OK. They're OK? Yeah. Who's your favourite group? Duran Duran. Duran Duran. We can't have that. The tension mounts as the evening wears on. Of course, for us, as sporting media types, there's always the back entrance to the gig. And this obviously isn't it. <laughs> Just jesting, everyone. This is the real stage door. Following now as we go and meet my very good friends, Iron Maiden, with this here very special backstage pass. Where are you well, going? I, no, I've got the, I've got the no, pass. Here. No I've got the pass. No. Come on, oh, come on, oh, come on, man. 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 Initially, it all happened in Steve Harris's brain, I think, um, because he was playing for a band called Smiler, who, funnily enough, I saw, because I was at college in the East End, and um, we put on a show, uh, like, a kind of, uh, like a kind of charity show sort of thing, and it was The Jam was headlining it at Stratford Town Hall, right? And it was like, it, well, back in those days when, when they had, like, one Vox AC30 and everything else and that Smiler were on. And the big thing was the singers to shake up a can of beer and go <laughs> into the audience, you know, as a part of the show. And um, I don't know whether Steve was playing with them then, but they were kind of like an ordinary good time rock and roll band. And um, Steve wrote some songs. And they said, you can't do that, you know, the bass player should only play one note, you know, and, and that very, very, very occasionally. So off he went to form Iron Maiden, more or less as a kind of reaction to that whole sort of thing. And attracted Dave Murray. Um, and uh, it's sort of the story has, has continued ever since, really. And about three and a half years ago, they picked up me um, with a shovel, and uh, <laughs> here I am. Here we are. <laughs> Keith, what is the appeal of Iron Maiden? Well, best ever rock band going. Simple as that. What does it do to you when they're up there? Oh, it's great, you know, because I've known them sort of since they started. And like, when you think back to the old pub days and that, and then sort of see them up there, you sort of get a, get a feeling right here, you know, see them up there. Cod, you're a, a follower of Iron Maiden, are you? Yes, Approximately how many gigs have you been to? Tonight's the 110. 110? When did you start following them? Uh, 78. Well, this is my 18th gig on the current tour. How many? 18. 18. 18. 18. You got them for punishment. That's a bit expensive, though, isn't it? It right. can be, but it's, you know, I'd rather do this than just, say, spend a fortnight in Spain. Right. You know, because you're with your friends. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what cities have you been to? Newcastle, oh. Birmingham, Sheffield, Southampton down the south. I've been all over the country. But the fans, what, what do they expect of you? Um, a lot. I mean, do they expect you to come? You must have people that follow you. Right whatever, the what, whatever they, whatever they expect of me, and I'm never entirely sure because um, they expect to be entertained, and they expect us to uh, give them our attention because they, after all, did pay to come and see the show. They didn't pay to see us get off on ourselves. I mean, I think a lot of artists go around as if they've got a huge mirror taped this far away from their faces, and that's all they notice throughout the whole show. They pull all these poses and all the shapes and, you know, throw star moodies and wobblers and everything, and they, they don't do it to the audience. They're doing it for the benefit of themselves. The time I've noticed that often is when you, you see a band in a small club, and uh, they're playing all the right notes, and the harmonies are perfect, I've seen bands play Iron Maiden songs better than we do. <coughs> better than we do. Um, but not really go down. And they're, they're playing fantastically. Every guitar artist playing a million notes to the minute, you know, faster than Eddie Van Halen on, you know, Angel Dust or whatever. And um, they're still not going down. And it gets louder and they're still not going down. And they, nobody has yet actually spoken to the audience or looked the audience in the face or done anything. You know, they're already at Madison Square Gardens, half these people, thinking they're in a big arena, and they're in a little club. Uh, in the early days, they were just probably the best pub band going. Um, and then once you've actually, you get to know them, and they become sort of personal friends. And instead of just letting them drift off and go around the world, 
you pretend you want to watch them grow up with it. You want to watch them get bigger and bigger and bigger. Play clubs, you know, pubs, and it's the arcade, it's the arcade, and it's the rainbow hammers. I need that It's more important to us to sell uh, one record to a person who appreciates the band, cares about the band, knows the music, and likes to get involved with what the band's about, than it is to sell three records to people who heard it on the radio and think, wow, there's two really nice tunes on there. I'm going to, you know, take it back home, get wasted, and sit and play it to death, and then get sick of it and throw it in the dustbin. <laughs> So where does the thrill lie then? Is it, is it having 10,000 people in front of you or 10,000 people buying you a record? It's having 10,000 people with you mm. is a thrill of knowing that, not that you control 10,000 people, but that 10,000 people support you in what you're doing. That's a very nice feeling. A person who follows Iron Maiden, what are they called? Uh, Lucky. Lucky. Ah, <laughs> oh, good one.